Hi everyone, it's Marianne. Welcome to episode two of my moving vlog series. And in case if you haven't heard, I moved to a new place. And if you kind of know why and everything that's involved with my move, go check out my empty apartment tour vlog, which is the first in this moving vlog series. But just to catch you up, I moved to what is essentially a one bedroom apartment. It's an entire basement of an end unit town home. And I like a lot of things about it. As mentioned, it is a one bedroom apartment essentially. And I also have my own private bathroom and it has a pretty actually decent sized living area. And I have a private entrance and a fence in the backyard. And the only shared space is the laundry unit, which honestly, I'm just happy to have an in unit washer and dryer. And on top of that, my rent is on the lower end of the current market. So all in all great, but there is a big catch. It doesn't have a built-in kitchen, which admittedly is a very big con to not have a kitchen. A kitchen is such essential, especially for me who works from home and loves to cook. A kitchen is kind of is a must. But like I said, with all the perks that I've mentioned and with the low rent, I worked around not having a kitchen. So for this episode of the moving vlog series, I'm going to share with you how I kind of work around that and essentially build a kitchenette for myself. So if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Marianne. Welcome to my wasteless life. We're taking along my house plant and sustainable lifestyle journey and share with you some of my tips and tricks along the way. I also share personal vlogs like this and travel vlogs along the way. So if that type of content interests you, make sure to subscribe to my channel before the end of this video and also to make sure to like and comment down below. I would love to hear from you. But yeah, so let me share with you how I built my own kitchenette. Hi Teddy, so I brought my dog. He was not supposed to be here until Friday, but I brought him so I won't spend my first night alone. And I'm doing the baker's rack now. And I added one of my grow lights in the lab, so it's so much brighter here now. I can do this at night. The vacuum is working out pretty well. And I got the stuff from my parents' garage. It's not that much. And look what I'm doing in the bathroom. I'm trying out the induction stove. <laughs> Actually working pretty well. I have it in the bathroom because there's that exhaust here, but it's not going to be here um, permanently. I just have to fix the kitchen at first. And I'm cooking chicken for my dog. But yeah. And I haven't set up my computer yet. I don't have a TV, so this is how I'm watching my shows right now. All right, my battery is about to die. So when I moved into this apartment, kitchen-wise, all I had was the fridge. And luckily, they provided a full-size fridge because to be honest, if a fridge is also something that I have to worry about, it's just going to add so much to my expense in trying to build a kitchenette for myself, which at that point, I probably would have affected my decision if I want to move in here or not. But to be honest, I probably would still have, but I would just have a harder time by trying to create a kitchen for myself. So luckily I already have a full size fridge. So I was really like grateful for that. But in order to create the kitchenette, there's two things that I thought of immediately that I'm gonna need, which is a baker's rack and a kitchen island. So I looked everywhere, Amazon, Target, Walmart, the best ones that I could find for a good price is through Wayfair, I got the baker's rack and the kitchen island for around, I think $130 each. So that's what I ordered. So that's what I got. So you'll see me assembling the baker's rack and the kitchen island and organizing it to be able to create my own kitchenette. Hi everyone, it's Marianne. It's day three of move in. I didn't vlog day two of move in because I was just like trying to get everything I need for the most part, rent to Costco, rent to Aldi to get like basic grocery stuff and then went to Target to get a microwave. And also last night I finally finished assembling the baker's rack. So I also kind of tried to organize it already, but really I just want to like put the induction stove, the air fryer, the microwave, and everything that I kind of like need now to be able to function in this house and not have to go out and eat every day because that's going to get expensive. And now I'm going to build the kitchen island. So excuse my appearance, I'm wearing my work shirt, so if you see stains, and I'm on day three of my hair because I just want to get like the assembly stuff out of the way. So the kitchen island is the last big assembly stuff that I'm doing aside from my standing desk that I have to move from my old place into here so let's go do that so the kitchen island has been delivered it's in the front door I have to like bring it back here but I'm gonna make breakfast first before I start assembling the kitchen island so ideally I would have it assembled ready so I have a little bit more space to work but I can show you how I function in a, an apartment without a kitchen that I have to like 
recreate my own kitchenette as well. So it's gonna be an exciting adventure with this one. But yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. It is surprisingly not that heavy compared to this baker's oven. But yeah, I'm gonna go make breakfast and assemble this and organize my kitchen. So this is my induction stove. I learned about induction stove from Chef John Kong and he's a really good ambassador for induction stoves because so that's how I kind of like was able to convince myself that I could have an apartment without an uh, actual kitchen because there's stuff that I could make do that would work great in a small apartment. And this one's actually safer than a gas stove. You might have heard like news about gas stoves, whether you want to believe it or not. And it's also safer than using an electric burner, especially in an apartment that doesn't have a built-in kitchen. So I'm probably going to do a more in-depth video when it comes to induction stoves because I love cooking and you might have, if you have seen any of my shirts, I do a lot of cooking videos. So this is probably going to be popping up in all of my cooking videos as well. So, but yeah, let's go ahead and make breakfast. Right now it's just on a coffee table that I got off Facebook Marketplace. But once I set up the kitchen island, it actually has a space for me to put it and kind of like put it permanently. So when I have to cook stuff, so I don't have to like keep moving it. Here's the power cord, I'm just plugging it in. What's a great thing about a induction stove is it is very safe for an apartment because not all types of cookware works in it. So I'm gonna cook eggs and I'm gonna be using this pan and you can only use induction stove pans. And this one is stainless steel and not even all stainless steel would work. And it has to say it's compatible for induction. You cannot use any other stainless steel because this wouldn't work. And other than that, you could use cast iron as well. But if you use anything else, this won't heat up, it won't work. And that is also what also makes it safe for apartments because it's there's last chances of catching fire and everything. So I'm just gonna turn it on and set the temperature to 300. This gets really, really hot really, really quick, which is also a good thing about it. You know that you could cook pretty much anything, but also it heats up very fast. So if you don't wanna burn anything, like especially I'm just cooking eggs, just want to make sure that I am controlling the temperature and I'm still learning to use it so I might be saying stuff that is wrong but see if I lift it up it stops it says like put it back on there you go oil I got this container from the dollar store and also just like the thing about kitchens there are things that you need to invest in but there are things that don't need to be fancy like this one yeah it's also cheap in home goods or TJ Maxx but it's gonna cost you like four dollars at the very least this is from the dollar store it looks the same so just buy something from the dollar store so i also kind of like want to share with you what like what items are worth investing spend your money on when it comes to like moving into a new apartment where you have to start from scratch or just like buy things that are cheap because it's not worth like spending money on them ah, there's an eggshell there but we're gonna ignore that right now i still don't have a compost bin because i want a compost bin for my kitchen so i'm using a ziploc bag and i'm cracking two eggs i want two eggs because i don't have meat yet in this house well i have meat but like i, ha I have to defrost them and but i don't have breakfast meat so that is my protein and then a salt shaker funny thing about this salt shaker is i actually gave this to my sister when she moved into her new apartment, but she never ended up using it. So I took it from her. <laughs> there you go. And I also made coffee this morning. Client mom with a new mug that I got. This one's $2 from, I think, TJ Maxx. So $2, I was gonna splurge on a mug. But, but this is probably one thing that you don't really need, especially if you have like glassware already. Um, but yeah. And I think I made a shorts on how I made this. So. And also like learning how to cook in stainless steel um, so that it could be non-stick. And I might have put the egg too early because they say the pan has to be really, really hot before you put anything on it so it will be non-stick. But because I wasn't paying attention, it's probably gonna stick a little, but that's okay. We're learning, we are learning, and we are learning together. I lied, I found some spam, so let's go make some spam. Yeah, I got this knife set. Um, someone 
influenced me to get it, but I think a knife set is worth investing in. And it's actually a lot cheaper than how much she got it. I think she got it for like $50 almost. I got this for like $30. And the thing is, the one at Costco that I saw, it was also like $27, but it doesn't come with all of this. So I think that's a pretty good deal. And I'm gonna cut up the spam. I'm just gonna do two slices. There you go. I think the egg is ready. Oh, the, the egg was a fail, the egg was a fail. But that's okay, we are learning. <laughs> the egg did turn out scrambled, but that's okay. And then we're just gonna pop in the spam. Turn it off. I'm just gonna let that, that cool down and I clean up. I also forgot to get butter yesterday, but that's okay. Um, bake, start. Usually it's toasted by the time the preheat is done, so I just turn it off then. Okay, so it's ready. Put it in a bowl because I don't have larger plates yet. That's non bread. And we're gonna have breakfast here. Just gonna sit down on the floor. So, okay, I have breakfast. Okay, so I'm gonna have breakfast. And this is typically would be my view. Well, not really. I don't even know if I'm gonna set up a dining here. But I'm looking at the back of it right now, and I'm gonna show it later when it's like fixed and everything. But it would be a nice view to have um, breakfast in, and so and then something. If I put a kind of like a dining nook here, but it's gonna block the door. So and the door swing inwards, not outwards. And since I don't have butter, I got Chick Fil A sauce from yesterday when I had Chick Fil A for breakfast slash lunch. So I'm gonna eat that and. Bam, dip it in the sauce. Mm, sure look. Oh yeah, I'll catch you when I'm done eating breakfast. After breakfast, I started with the kitchen island. It went a little bit better than the baker's rack, but I still made mistakes in connecting some parts. I have to like redo some parts, and but it was an easier time. Like the baker's rack took me like a couple nights to finish out. This one I did it like in a few hours, and I really like it. Okay, so about four hours later, I've finished the kitchen island and I'm gonna go arrange it with the rest of my kitchenette. And when it comes to the kitchen appliances and like everything that I need, I just stuck to the essentials and the basics because I don't have a lot of space and everything is open shelving. So I think the first three things that I immediately thought that I'm gonna need is one, an air fryer, a microwave. I actually kind of like debated if I actually needed a microwave, but I eventually got one, it's the last kitchen appliance that I bought. And I got an electric kettle since I'm a big coffee and tea drinker. And it also helps me with having potable water at hand at all times. When it comes to everything else, it's bare minimums. When it comes to plates, utensils, everything. I also try to keep my pantry items to the most essentials. And a lot of my pantry stuff is actually in the fridge even though they're not really supposed to be in the fridge, but that's where I have storage instead of like having them out. So that pretty much is it. I'll give a full tour later on. I do have like a couple of shelves to fill up and also the temp shelves. I'm thinking of making it a pantry as you can see. A lot of them are on top of my fridge and I don't like that, but I need like organization storage to put on top and on those empty shelves. So, and this morning I found some storage bins in the storage closet so i'm gonna use it i like vacuumed it i'm gonna spray it with lysol just disinfect it and that kind of like my storage for my pantry that i'm gonna put on this bottom shelves here like this one i'm keeping trying to keep empty and this one also i'm not trying to put much stuff on it because i want the counter space and so far it's been working out I got this from Target and I want to see if I could like put it up here 
so that it has kind of like some type of backsplash or, or something. I might do that when I get back. I'm going to go pick up my dog. I'm already late, so I'm just going to pick him up and so he can come home. Okay, right. so it is the next day, which is I think day four of move in. So I finally like set up the kitchen. I actually made breakfast here this morning. I think I shared a short of it. Go check it out. This is like my portable sink. I'm going to probably do a separate video on how I actually function in this kitchenette so that I can share that with you, especially if you're in a similar situation, you're looking for an apartment and apartments are very expensive. And I think the reason why this apartment is so affordable is it doesn't have a kitchen. But for some people that could be a deterrent. But and it, was, and it was for me last year when I was like looking for an apartment and one place that I actually moved into already had a kitchenette and I said no to it because it didn't have a full kitchen. But now that I know better, like I kind of like researched and really like thought about out of all things that I could compromise in like apartment hut, why is it a kitchen? Kitchen is such an essential. If you're a one person like me, I mean I do have a dog, it's pretty easy. Maybe even if you're a, a couple too, it's pretty easy to make that compromise instead of like having shared space. Like, and, I, and I have a one bedroom apartment, it's not a studio, I have a private entrance, I have a really nice size backyard, I have a living area that is not a common area, like not, no space is really shared except for the laundry area, which honestly I'm happy to have an in-unit washer and dryer, so I don't mind have I don't mind that being a shared space instead of like having to go to my parents to wash my clothes or to go to my sisters to wash my clothes or like go through a laundry mat. So I'd rather have that than nothing. And I keep my utensils in the fridge um, just because I don't want it exposed and get dust and have to like wash it every time I have to use it. And I have like a drawer here that is perfect for like utensils. I'm gonna do a separate video on fridge restock and organization. So watch out for that as well. So first thing I'm going to do is to attach the grow light. So not only do I have lighting for my kitchenette, I have grow lights to put my plants in this area. I'm going to fix that because like my other command hook is in my car so that I could properly hide it. And in here, I'm thinking of putting either shelving or like a bar with hooks. Like, let me show you. So I don't know if you can see, I'm thinking of putting this one. But the problem with this is because of the hooks, I could barely put anything on it like the like the pots and pans won't like easily hook in here. So I'm thinking of just maybe putting it in one of the walls and hang plants from there. So we will see. Yeah. And I think I'm gonna remove the Starbucks tumblers from there because I think the light would like make it fade. I don't know, that's probably not accurate, but I'm gonna take off the Starbucks tumblers there and put some of my plants up there. <music> so this is the kitchen so far i've been using it for more than a week like i've been here for more than a week and this is what it looks like and we're gonna share you like some updates and tell you what work and what doesn't i'm pretty sure it's gonna be different by the time i do a full apartment tour but let's start with this kitchen island so as you can see, the induction stove working perfectly. This is a cast iron pot and there's actually leftovers in here. I haven't put it away, but this one works pretty well. I do try to keep it empty. So when I'm cooking, I have space. I have my synapses here, but I take it out when I am cooking just because I don't want to plant near while I'm cooking, but I want to take advantage of the grow lights. So I put plants in here, which you'll see some more in the baker's rack. And then here I have like my oil, my canola oil, this is olive oil, soy sauce, vinegar, salt and pepper. So these are the only ones that I keep out. The rest of my spices and everything I either have in my storage boxes for my pantry or they're in the fridge. And on this wall, I didn't end up putting any shelving yet, but I put this frame. And if you remember, if you've been watching for a while, this frame was originally in my bathroom in my old place and here are my utensils like all bamboo i think all of this i got from tj maxx but this one i got from world market 
and this one's just an old one that I got from the previous house and this one I actually just taped this I didn't like peel and stick because this is this this sheet doesn't come as a whole I have to like individually like take out the square tiles and then like stick it on the wall and I'm like I'm not gonna do that and it's going to be a pain when I have to take it out but technically I'm not supposed to be pasting any contact paper or wallpaper on the wall anyways so that one is easy to remove and here I have the bird cage if remember this was in my bedroom and I just used to hang it to hang some pot holders and a strainer and then over here this is kind of like the latest addition that I did to it. It's still kind of like a makeshift one, but basically I added a tension cord and used some of the S hooks that came with the kitchen island and an old shower curtain that I cut just to fit the size so that I could have like some type of door for this one because no matter how neatly I organize the stuff underneath, it will still look very cluttered. So originally I had the microwave here and I open it. But now I just have like random stuff like my rice cooker, plates, everything, my portable sink, my container with my Starbucks cups and other containers. And the reason that I moved the microwave here because this one is not that sturdy to be holding a microwave. So I took that out. So, and I'm thinking of maybe eventually DIYing like an actual door in it, like a kitchen door type. But right now this curtain thing works. And then on the side, I have my rice container, my oats, and I have the paper towel here. I'm still like trying to get a paper towel rack. And I'm thinking of like the magnetic ones that attach to the fridge. So it will hold the paper towel and also have like space or shelving for spices. So I'm thinking of getting that from Amazon. And I have my pans and my cutting board hooked at the side, also some strainer. My small pot is down there and the food processor that I got from Bear is down in here. So that is the kitchen island and here is the baker's rack and I have my plants on top like I said to take advantage of the grow lights and I haven't fixed this one yet because I'm thinking of like rewiring this to connect on this plug which I will explain why I need to. And here I got my coffee stuff, my mugs, my bowls. And again, this one I tried to keep empty so I have additional counter space. And I moved the microwave here. It just like holds it better. And the storage bins for like my pantry. So this one holds my dog's food, treats, medication. And this one's like canned goods and stuff like that. And this one is kind of like what's in here I think this has like ziplocs and stuff like my snack bin and this one's just like whatever stuff like anything that I need to put in the storage bin that doesn't fit into those four I put in there and this one I just like kind of like my recycling bag so if I don't because my recycling can is outside and if I don't want to go outside I just like put this stuff in here temporarily before I take it out and that is the fridge. And then I put this runner over here and underneath it is anti-fatigue mat. It serves two purpose. It's nice on the feet and also since because this is carpeted, when I'm cooking or doing anything, I don't want stuff spilling on the carpet and staining the carpet. So at least the runner and the anti-fatigue mat will catch it, especially if like chopped liquid and stuff. So there's that. So far it is working out well. My big issue is lack of counter space so I actually was thinking of adding a table here or get another kitchen island to put over here but temporarily what I did is this so as you can see I have moved the kettle here and I got this air fryer oven that a company sent me and kind of like my coffee stuff so this is kind of like when I turn into a coffee bar and I also put this toaster oven here and the kettle because I've experienced it twice now whenever I try to use more than one thing at the same time like for example I'm cooking and I use the microwave the power trips so that's kind of like annoying and also like I don't want to cause fires so I want to separate the appliances because there's only like one outlet here and one outlet here. So it's already connected to the fridge and then one outlet has a surge protector that connects like the 
grow light, the air fryer, and the microwave. But at one point when the air fryer was here, instead of over there, the kettle was over there. If I use induction stove and the air fryer at the same time, the power trips. So that's kind of annoying, but like, but I don't want any to happen like fire incident. And I know it's kind of like, maybe it's too overload for that many appliances for just two outlets. So I tried to separate the toaster oven and the kettle because the power always trips whenever I use the kettle. So I just put it in a separate one. And this morning I was like using this items and this items all at the same time and the power wasn't tripping. So I think that works pretty well, but I kind of still want a kitchen island in here for of some sort so that I have extra counter space plus dining table and stuff. And I'm gonna like put a Amazon simulation here of how it might look like if I add a kitchen island or just an additional table. I think it works as long as I don't get something that's too big so that it won't be too cluttered. And it also kind of covers the bottom because like I said, even though how organized I make it, just because a lot of stuff is out, it still looks very cluttered. So I'm still like looking like better ways to organize the stuff in here because everything is open shelving and just to make sure it doesn't look cluttered and it just looks organized all the time. And that's how I created and designed a kitchenette for myself in this apartment that doesn't have a built-in kitchen. And overall, it is working out for me. There are some challenges as mentioned, like the power tripping and the lack of counter space. And honestly, not having a actual sink in a kitchenette is a bit of a challenge but it is a small apartment. The bathroom is right there. When, and when spring, summertime comes, I want to see how I can figure out to have a utility sink right outside in the backyard. So it's a little bit more accessible than going to the bathroom. But honestly, it's not that bad. I mean, I have, I can put in extra steps to be honest, but it definitely would be better if I have like a wet bar or a utility sink that is a lot closer to the kitchenette. Maybe I can get the property manager or the landlady to put one in the laundry room. I think there's space for utility sink in there. I'll work it out with them. Cause they did tell me that they have plans to put in an actual kitchen in here. They just hadn't gotten around it. So maybe this setup is temporary and I could work with them to have an actual built-in kitchen in here, at least a sink to be honest, and maybe X house. And that's all pretty much I need. I mean, the kitchenette, like I said, it has been working out and I'm glad I was able to create and design it according to my taste and like function. And if you have any tips and suggestions to help me improve the kitchenette, let me know. I'd be happy to hear it, especially those of you experienced living in small apartments. And the next one in the moving vlog series is the bathroom. So which kind of related to like my kitchen net vlog as well, because the bathroom is kind of like functioning as part of the kitchen as well. But you will see in the bathroom episode of my moving vlog series. But thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, do subscribe. I come up with videos every week. And if you haven't yet, check out these videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other and have a mindful day. Bye.